afternoon. Okay. <laughs> I'm so happy again to be here in the Biohacker Summit. This is actually our fifth time. So we have been three times in Finland and once in Stockholm and now here in Tallinn. And it, it always feels like I'm coming home. This is our home field uh, where to present to people who are really interested to not only interested to optimize their health, but also ready to do something about it. So today I would like to briefly go through one hot topic, which is microcirculation. What is it? What is the problem with it? And what can you do to help it? So let's start. So <clears throat> first of all, let's start with the problem. This is like a big fire in the world. And what is the fire? What is this red thing? It's this Mm, cardiovascular disease, as you can see. That's the main cause for most of the civilization to, for death. So our blood circulation is not working in a proper way. So a big, big, big problem. And of course, it has a big impact on, on, on the society and, and the cost for the society. Another very familiar is diabetes. And, and this is... Uh, we all know that it's a big problem, even in here, in, I think in Estonia and in Finland, it's 10% of all people, they have some sort of diabetes, 10%. Uh, and we have thought that that's more for the development country, developed, developed countries and not for the developing countries. But that's, that's where the real big bomb is. If you look at these big countries like South Asia or India, they will just explode in the next uh, 25 years in, in uh, diabetes. So, why do I tell about this? It's this. Uh, <clears throat> these big problems, then they start in a very small fires. So, the big fire starts with the small fire. That's the thing. So, what is this small fire? And that's the mi microcirculation. The problem starts in microcirculation. And now the question is, what is this microcirculation? Actually, it, it's not been so known uh, even to the medicine, uh, only since the last 20, 30 years, it's really becoming more focused. And during the last 10 years, it's really getting uh, some focus. So there are some, if, even if you talk with some medical professionals, they don't really know what, what is microcirculation. So you are now in the forefront again to, to learn something about microcirculation. And here is one of the most prestigious uh, associations, the American Heart Association. They had a had a, a congress a couple of years ago, and they made a, a consolidation report about that. And they say, here again, small blood vessels, big health problems. That was the like, one-liner, that this is the problem. And <clears throat> then the real issue is this, that they could say that there's a high evidence, high correlation between chronic diseases and impaired microcirculation. So we come back to this, but it's the small fire. It starts from the microcirculation, and then you have a lot of diseases. So this, this list is long with the, with the chronic diseases, uh, which has a clear, clear correlation between that. And, and their conclusion was, we need to put more resources more brains, more money, more time into researching what is this microcirculation, how can we measure it, and of course, how can we improve it. And, and this has created a lot of new research. So today, we, we see that there is, the last three years, there's been 800 uh, researches on microcirculation only. So it's becoming a hot topic, and we are really understanding that there's something we, we need to do. So what is this microcirculation? I have 15 minutes time, so I will be <laughs> make it pretty short. So let's, let's take it like a, first, what, how big is it? We, we, we tend to think about our blood circulation at these are the big veins, because that's what we see. But the microcirculation is what you don't see. So it's, it's below 0 0.2 millimeters. You, don't, you have to have a microscope to see it. But it's huge. It's 74% of all your vessels. And you don't see it, and you don't feel it. But that's a big, big, big thing. And <clears throat> what does it do? It actually, we, we have, this event is so much talking about nutrition, how to get energy, and so on and so forth. The microcirculation is in charge of the last mile. 
It's like a post office bringing the post to the customer. Because the customer is the cell. It's the cell. So our, the microcirculation's job is to bring the nutrition, the, the oxygen, to the cell so that the cell can do its job. It produces energy and it does its job. And of course, you have to take also the met metabolic waste products out from the system. So that's what it does. So if, you, if your microcirculation is not working and you are eating excellent food, it's a very expensive poop. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it doesn't go into your system. So, very vast, big system. And so, and so what, is, what is the cause of that the microcirculation is not in so good shape? Well, it's a, quite obvious. It's our lifestyle. And we have, of course, here, here in, in, the, in, the, in this, this uh, event, a lot of things how to improve your lifestyle. And all those really have a big impact on your microcirculation. So we sit too much. You know, we have here Mr. Jalkanen telling about sitting. They are saying that sitting is becoming a bigger problem than smoking. But we are sitting too much. We have a lot of stress. Has anybody had stress lately? Some, some, <laughs> because that will shrink your, your vessels and it will, then the circulation is better. Do you sleep well? And unfortunately, we all get old. And all these and some others as well, the main things which will make your microcirculation so this doesn't work in, in a proper way. Now, the problem with microcirculation, I'm an engineer, so I'm used to that when you have a system, you have a good measurement system and an alarm system. That if something is wrong, there is something say, bap, 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 this is not working. Or there is, a, you know, your brakes are not working, you, have, you don't have enough fuel, or you, your oil is empty. But our system doesn't tell me anything about the microcirculation. It doesn't tell me if it's not working. So the problem then is that it's a long time here, under cover, so to say, under the seaside, when, when Things happen slowly, and then it becomes worse and worse and worse, and then you see symptoms. But then you have already developed maybe for 10 years the microcirculation thing. And then you go to the doctor or you start doing something. So that's one of the challenges of, of, uh, of, of microcirculation. So, of course, you are now interested, so what could I do about it? Do all the things you have heard today, and you will hear it after me. That's the one thing. But I have one more, and that is use technology. We are also very interested about technology. Uh, it's fantastic, this with technology. We are all wearing, here we have the techie guy. <laughs> He's really doing all the things. Uh, but for instance, my, we are getting technology, we, we are becoming more and more, let's say, familiar, or we are not opposing technology to bring technology very close to ourselves. So like you have the watch. Did you see, by the way, uh, what iPhone uh, announced this week? The ECG, how you can measure your heart, which is very interesting. So you are, coming, you are getting more and more these sensors into you. Uh, I, have, I have bad hearing, so I'm using hearing aids. They are connected to the internet. They are connected directly to my phone. So if, if my doorbell rings and I cannot hear it, but it's connected to the internet, I can hear it in my ears. So we are getting more and more technology very close to our skin. So, so that's a good thing, because then we are ready to use it, the technology. And for instance, using technology, like what we are representing here, to use some electric uh, uh, currents or, or magnetic therapy to, to improve your microcirculation. This is now getting a very interesting thing. Look at these guys. You have GlaxoSmithKline and Google investing almost a billion just to think about electrical signals, how they could improve your health. Yeah. So, so when you use, now uh, my sales pitch, <laughs> when you use our, our system, it will stimulate your microcirculation. When this microcirculation gets better, you will get the oxygen and the nutrition to your system your internal regulatory system will kind of restart or get better. When that functions better, then you will get energy into your system and your, your cells start to work and they can do their job as they should do. 
So then your internal work, you have like a like fault tolerant system which works. And it goes the other way around if your microcirculation gets worse. Here's an example of a, a, a study which we have done when we see that this is the type du, <laughs> diabetes type 2 patients, and we are giving them oxygen treatment. This is the, the red one here. Um, you see, train, train, only training, oh, sorry, only training, and then training and oxygen, and it increases that compound effect. And then you use our vascular physical therapy, and then you get even more. So the combination, it kind of adds on to the thing. So my last thing is a short video where I will show what happens actually in your microcirculation. This is a very, very unique video. It is filmed in an in a, uh, institute of microcirculation in Berlin, where they have a huge equipment to do this. It is, it is filmed from a chronic stress patient from the colon, and see what happens really on the microcirculatory level. So let's look at it. It's, it's only like less than a minute. Good. So tunica, colon, tunica muscularis, and we, we check it out. And it, it is a chronic stress patient, about 50 years old man, uh, where we have uh, looked at the, how does it look like when, when you are kind of really bad shape. And here you see, this is the capillaries, and, and these are the small arterioles. And you see the blood cells are not really moving in the, in, the, in, the, in the veins. And that means that you don't get the oxygen, you don't get the nutrition, and also the waste products are not going out from there. Now using this new technology, you will stimulate this microcirculation, and then you will see a clear improvement. This is after two minutes of, of uh, application. It's better, but it's not good yet. It, it, you still have here, this is not moving. It's going back and forth, and it's not really uh, in, getting as good as it should be. And the following is after four to five minutes, and you start seeing some clear improvement in, in the system. The body responds very quickly to this kind of stimulation, and now you see it's, it's, it's better, <laughs> very obvious. Now we have to think about it was pretty bad when we started from. So if you are in good shape, you don't start from that situation. You start from a little higher level. But top athletes are using this a lot uh, uh, to, to recover from hard training, from, from uh, uh, competition and so forth. And now this is after eight minutes, because the one, one treatment is eight minutes. And it will hold you for 12 to, eight to 14 hours. So you do this twice a day, like brushing your feet, once in the morning, once in the evening. So that's what you get with, with technology uh, using BMR vascular therapy. So this is before and then after. So I invite you to come and test to our booth this new technology. And I hope you see you again in the next event. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nils. And uh, you mentioned that some high-performing high athletes are using uh, yeah. the Beamer. Uh, are there any other, let's say, unconventional uh, life areas where people use it? I've, I've heard like maybe some uh, people in NASA are also doing it. Yeah, we, yes, we have uh, well, top athletes. We have Get Gunter here who has been mm -hmm. using one of our most famous. But we, the, because this is high technology, also NASA has been very yeah. interested in it. And actually, we have a collaboration with NASA. And they have uh, licensed our o software, this, this signal, which is patented, okay. the signal. And they will integrate, or they are exploring to integrate it, put it into their spacesuit. Nice. That's a very small market for us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it shows that it's a unique technology. Yeah. And high, high technology. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want to become as, as good as an astronaut, then you should definitely <laughs> try the Beamer. Yeah, exactly. So, th All right. thanks. There you are. All right, thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> there you are.